Good morning. Good morning, little kitten buses. How you doing? Hello, everybody. Welcome to Color and Chat with Joanna. I am Joanna. Hi, hi, hi. These poor banged up hands. Oh, God. Well, it is Thursday. I don't know where Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday went because I have been in a construction frame of mind trying to put the Christmas Yoo-Hoo together a little early this year, but actually it's not. I mean, I do it early every year. I really do. I'm, I, I just have to. I have to. It's part of my nature. First, because I have the patience of a two-year-old and it's Christmas, you know. We got to get stuff going. So how are you doing this week? Are you getting it done? Anyway, okay, so today we are working on, think of me, as you can tell, she's just rocking and rolling along. Um, it looks a little pixie here because I'm so close to it, but I do think when I get her uh, finished, she'll be okay. I'm having a hard time trying to figure out whether I'm supposed to be rolling it backwards or forwards because... I'm getting a little bit of popping on this canvas. And it could be the glue. It could be the age. I don't know. But I feel like I'm going to be doing a little bit of filling in at the end. Um, so I'm not going to take it too personally. If I look back and there's, you know, a little guy on the loose, I'll come back for him in the end. Anyway, <laughs> how you guys doing? You are right? You good? Are you good? I, oh God. You guys, long-suffering husband is going to cook tonight. I'm so scared. He says he wants to make meatloaf. Now, there, there are two things that, okay, he doesn't cook everything, but... He has mastered a couple of things. It's taken 20 years to get this stuff done. Oh, by the way, I got the most beautiful lanterns for my um, anniversary, and I have to show them to you before we end our our chat today. They are bronze, and they're huge, like, huge, like, like, I don't even think they fit in frame. They're, they're big. They're big octagonal, and I'm going to decorate the tops of them. Maybe I'll just show them to you in the house tour. I think that would be easier than um, trying to drag them in here because they're kind of heavy. And But they are bronze, so we did find something to stick with our uh, theme in the year of. Okay. Anyway, so Crazy Pants says he wants to cook. Now, I know. I know what you're thinking. Oh, no. Yeah. He... <laughs> there are... I don't like to let him near things that contain meat. Meatballs, I do the meatballs. I always make a lot of meatballs, and I always make sure there's at least an extra two dozen to bring to my neighbor... Um, you know, who is a police officer and a dear sweet friend and they, boy, they get meatballs. They're just like, meatballs! And the kids just run. And, oh, Miss Joanna made meatballs! Oh my God, you would think it was foie gras. It was like, I mean, these four little munchkins are so cute. I love when children are still little like that and they think you're cool. <laughs> You know, they're kind of outgrowing the cupcakes every week and going, oh, more cupcakes. Oh, by the way, this is what we're working on. Um, I'm ADD all over the place today. you got to forgive me. Think of Me by Mandy Manzano. This is a Diamond Art Club. She is 21 by 39. Long-legged girl in a big yellow dress. Think of me. Think of me fondly. Okay. <clears throat> Um, that's where we're at today. So, yeah, back to, I'm sorry, I digress. <laughs> digress is my middle name, okay? You know, I went from being my uh, mother's daughter, which is Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, what has she done now? You know, that happens, like, 
all the time to, uh, you know, I digress. But, um, I think I can put all these yellow guys away. They were highlighting something somewhere. I have no idea. That would not be, I like the buttery yellow that we're going to do this dress in. I'm dying to get to the dress because I know I can like oh, multi-place it. I've got two multi-placers I'm working with. Um, this is my lucky seven. Seven is my sweet spot, you know. Uh, seven doesn't bother me. I can keep up with seven. If you're doing square drills, they're a little bit more temperamental than the round. But then when I get to really long ones, I've got the big boy here. And I think I, I either 12 or it says 10, but I don't know. I can pack a lot on it. Um, so, you know, we're, we're, we're really uh, fortunate with her doing Mandy Manzano is so much fun. You just, the most, the easiest thing I can give you for advice on this, if you're doing a diamond art clip uh, canvas with her and you have all these black outline swirly things happening, do all the swirly black outline stuff first. See, I take off a square at a time and I might just do half and then do the other half, you know, as time goes on, I never, I never know how long I'm going to get to actually work on it before the dogs start barking. I have two great Pyrenees, so if you hear in the background, it's not like, you know, Voldemort coming from the deep. It's actually a dog. They're just a little baritone because they're huge. Anyway, um, I like doing all the little black outline first. And then you can really color block and fill in the little compartment so much easier. And it really does work. Oh, and somebody else was asking me about something. Um, they were asking about static in the bottles. And people, I don't care where you live, it is no freaking vember. And there's static everywhere. God, my nails are so Look at a cuticle cuts. Oh God, they're so banged up. Poor, poor people. Um, anyway, I gotta do this real quick. Hold on a minute. We got a, we got a problem. You know, this is an emergency. This is, can't be working like that. Uh, okay. Sorry. You get a cuticle stuck on you and it's like, get it. It'll catch on everything and just ruin your life. It's only the little tiny stuff. We can handle the big stuff, right? Okay. So, someone was complaining about static and they were, rec other people were recommending um, get a fabric softener sheet in it. Well, I put a dime. <laughs> Laugh if you want. I use a dime only because it's the size that'll fit in this. And just shake it up. You know, for one or two minutes. Shake, 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 Malone. Make your drills all happy now. Shake, shake, shake. Okay. I think we should be about there. And then what happens, it, it helps to detangle them. And they come out nice and uh, smooth and you don't have all those little knotty nubs and you don't get a ton of clumping or static. So, a little, little trivia for media, you know. If you find it amusing or useful, give it a try. If you don't, oh well. Nobody's forcing you to do anything yet. Anyway, so... Where was I in my digressive little conversation today? Oh, yes. Mr. Long-Suffering. Now, most people would be happy if they had a husband who could boil water. And for me, I, you know, pretty much rule and roar in the kitchen. And I mean, that's not your place of... Mm -mm. Now, you need permission before you go in there. What are you doing in there? I hear stuff rattling around and I'm like, what are you doing? 
<laughs> it all becomes very suspect. You know, like, what's he up to? I don't know. I don't know. I find out. Anyway. So, uh, when it comes to meatballs and meatloaf or pot roast or chicken parm, anything with meat, really, I kind of like to take the reins because... You know, he doesn't understand the attention that uh, protein requires. If it is chicken, it will require being tenderized and pounded with a mallet into submission. And if it is a meatball, it requires tenderness but not over-mixing. You know, these are important situations. You, you, you can't be feeding people garbage. Oh, hang on, that one went way too long. But that's okay, you can just move it over. And it becomes part of somebody else's problem now. <laughs> Pass the problem on. Delegate, delegate, that's what I say. Don't try to do everything yourself, delegate. <clears throat> anyway, so I'm thinking... <sighs> the last time he made a meatloaf. Okay, now, now listen... Men are weird about the way they cook, even if they grill. If they grill happy, sometimes the food turns out really good. But most of the time, if they grill angry because, oh, man, I got to cook tonight. I don't feel good. You know, angry food tastes like it, okay? You cannot eat and enjoy angry food. So he made a meatloaf <laughs> like a week ago. And I mean, oh God, it was a horrible day. I was in a bad mood. He was in a bad mood. David was in a bad mood. The dogs were in a bad mood. Everybody in the world was in a bad mood. Everyone, everywhere. It was just, it was bad mood day. There should be a shirt for this, a t-shirt, you know, national bad mood day. Anyway. So, Mr. Bad Mood Guy, um, he decides he's going to make meatloaf, and he goes in there unsupervised. Again, he knows I am sleeping in the middle of the afternoon because I know this day has got some bad juju all over it, and it ain't getting any better, okay? I'm getting out while the getting is good. I think it's time for Netflix and a nap. And, uh, you know, I wake up and of course the smell of burning something is in my kitchen. <laughs> I mean, really, he cooks, he thinks he's Hannibal Lecter in there. It's terrible. I'm like, what is that smell? Oh my God, I'm going to lose it. What is that? <laughs> And David, thank God David didn't get a smell of it because he was at work, you know. But he came home and he was just like, ooh, somebody dying here? Mom, are you are you doing that high fiber crap again? Because, you know, you're, you're kind of killing us all. With... Thank God the high fiber thing didn't last long. Oh, no. That was, that was an event in terror in itself, okay? I'm telling you, he comes in proud as a four-year-old. Mommy, look at my picture. Look at my picture. Like my TikTok. Like my TikTok. Here, here, here. And he gives him his plate. And it is his meatloaf with the store-bought mashed potatoes that he made in the microwave oven that have water all around the sides. It's like a, it's like a Swanson dinner that came to die. The meatloaf itself, I took one bite of it. It tasted like a brake pad. I was so frightened, and I was like, now, there are times when he really does this pretty well. I mean, he he has really, you know, gotten over the fear of coming in contact with actual food product, which, by the way, he is so weird about that. And... um <laughs> And now it's like, um, sure, honey, it's great. 
So I was like, well, did, did you put onions or anything? No, there's no onions and no peppers or anything in it. I wanted to make it dog friendly in case the dogs wanted a bite. So you basically just took a chunk of meat and you made a big round chunk of meat <laughs> with a lot of ketchup on it and you baked it. <laughs> It could have put anybody in a coma. I'm telling you, I could have used this as a weapon and I could have been held liable for it. It was so heavy. It was like, even the plate was like, um, hello, Mrs. Hare, don't eat this. I don't know what's in this plate, but she's weighing us down pretty bad now, you know. Pretty bad. My mother in heaven is going... Don't do it, child. Don't do it, child. Stay away. Stay away from that. It'll send you to the Lord straight away. That will send you to the Lord. Which is, you know, another favorite phrase around here. I will send you to the Lord straight away. You know, but anyway. Um, I took a bite and then I chewed on it for a couple of minutes gnawed on it actually like a cow and then um spit it out and gave it to george while he wasn't looking and then george took it and he's like you know okay all right because everything you know every time i eat it so george is like oh are you gonna eat that mommy mommy you gonna eat that and i know this is exactly the way he sounds to me in my head when he is mooching for food, you know, it's, oi, mom, you're going to eat that. It's never like, you know, Fiona is just like, what have you got there? Anything worth eating? But he is so funny. Usually he's all about the community dinner. And I don't, I have a very unorthodox way of, I, I do eat with my dogs. First of all, to them, it's a very important um, sense of community. And uh, it's very important um, to our relationship. You don't like it, that's okay. You know, but it works for me. Anyway... <laughs> So poor Georgie, he takes it and he takes like two bites of it and he's like, Why well, thank you, mommy? Mommy, you gonna eat that? You gonna share it with me? Oh wait, you are, you are, you are. Look at you, look at you. He go. He chews it for about two minutes. <laughs> and I notice something very, very unusual is happening. My dog is not swallowing. <laughs> He's not swallowing the food. And I'm like, oh my God. So, um, yeah. So I, I couldn't pawn it off on George. I said, you know what? I am going to try to pawn this on Fee. Because Fiona it will eat anything. She is really a ferret. I swear to God. All she wants to do is steal everything and eat your food. And I thought, well, you know, I mean, she eats carrots and artichokes and, and oh my God, wait till you see her with avocado. She loves it and spits it all over and makes such a mess of herself. Um, Fiona snubbed it too. Now I'm really in trouble here because he is guarding the kitchen and I can't get this thing down the garbage disposal because God only knows it'll probably spit it back up and go get the demons out get the demons out get the demons out of the dishwasher disposal no way we're not doing that it's horrible <laughs> I finally just had to come clean you know I really I really you know Plenty of good marriages, husbands and wives lie to each other. They lie to each other all the time. And some of these lies are very important lies. Like the ultimate, does this make me look fat? Ah, 
I mean, that is such a setup, you know, from hell itself. What do you mean that makes me... Does this make me look fat? You are pitching for an argument. You have... There's no way out of this. No good way out. Bissing, and you know what? And then they say, you look fine. Fine? That's the F word. You don't ever want to use that when you're describing a woman at all. You know? Ever, ever, ever. There are things you can get away with and things you can't. So I finally just had to tell him, you know, baby, I'm really... Um... What? So... What is in this? <laughs> it's really interesting flavor. I'm trying to find something positive or redeeming for the meatloaf. And then I'm like, no. You know what? I'm going to change my attitude about that right now. If I made this and put that down, he would be like, are you having some kind of hormonal issues again? Or are you just trying to poison me for the insurance? Because... This is really, like, foul. <laughs> like, like, foul like a beast. And, uh, <laughs> and he wouldn't hold back. Mm. Yeah, this is turning into a full-on whipping chat. Oh, coffee cup today is, every day it's another cup. Wendy Williams, I, I can't tilt it too much because it's got drippings all over it. <laughs> Hey, Gav. Woo, woo. This is my Wendy Williams cup when we got to go see Wendy uh, for her 10th anniversary. It was so cool. And got to meet Wendy. And she was really chatty that day and having a good time. And I got her on a good day. Wendy's not having such a great... Her life is in a real struggle right now. Let's all just... Hold a good tiny thought moment for Wendy. It's not, not good for her right now. I don't, you know. I, I'm, I'm worried for my poor girl. She's taking a hit. I hope she gets well soon. And, you know. She's not irreplaceable because none of us are irreplaceable. But all of us should be irreplaceable. You know, all of us should be thought of that well and and I and I hope that um wherever she is right now because I've kind of lost track everybody's got a different Wendy story so um I hope she is surrounded by people who love her and I hope she is getting comfort in some way because I know with that lipedema it's a nightmare I've I've you know, heard so much about people who suffer with this. This is not funny. It really isn't. Um, it's a terrible situation. And there's a lot going on in her life. And I wish her, I wish her good, good, good things. Poor girl, come back to me so we can be snarky together. That was fun. You want to you wanna know what's really fun? Take your husband to a Wendy Williams show. <laughs> now, my husband, and I don't mean this in any derogatory manner, is the meekest, whitest man on the planet. <laughs> I'm not kidding. He really is. He doesn't have a foul word to say about anybody. You know, but he is, like, so out of sorts going to this concert because he's like, it really was like a concert more than a show because, you know, we're in the city and I was like, come on, I want to go. He's like, okay, we'll go. You know, well, we went, some, some cancellations happened and we got lucky with some tickets and I was so happy. I mean, it was like, oh my God, this is... This is so much fun, but I wish any of my girlfriends but you were here. And it kind of was like, we do everything together. What do you mean? I was like, well, I mean, you know, I, I know you always pass by. And, 
you see me watching her on the morning show and that kind of thing. But this may be a lot for you, honey. <laughs> he, it was a lot. It was a lot for him. He got pegged out in the audience. Um, Suzanne got him in the warm-up. And Wendy was like, and look at look at this sweet guy right here. Look at this. Honey, did this is are you taking your wife here? You you came here with your wife today? Well look at you. Well look at you. And he was just smiling like <laughs> you know, he was like, God, she's he was like, I just had such a good time and he rolled with it and had so much fun. So uh John is a fan of the show. He was easily won over. And, uh, I mean, every time, every time we're in New York, <laughs> every time we were in New York, we always went to, a, we always went to a show. We went to see, uh, uh, David Letterman. And then a few years later was, uh, Stephen Colbert, which I found out by the way, my husband and Stephen Colbert might be misters from another sister. I'm telling you, there are, there are too many, um, too many things that are too alike that are happening there. They're so funny. They're both they're both just you know salty. And um, we've been to the View. We I'm telling you, if there's a show in New York, we go. <laughs> they're free. We get a free swag bag, and uh, you never know who's going to be on. You know. You never know until you get in. So it's always interesting. But um, back to the meatloaf. Yeah, we had to have a come to Jesus talk. We had a company meeting about the meatloaf. And I was like, you cannot do this to people. I will teach you and we will do this together. You have to make the meatloaf with the love. You can't make angry meatloaf you know because meatloaf the only good thing about meatloaf the only redeeming quality of meatloaf is that meatloaf is a love food it is a love product so it has to be well this was made with love that meatloaf was not made with love that was made with I wanted to go get a pizza and she's making me make meatloaf <laughs> You know, can't do pizza every night. Anyway, uh, so tonight, I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to try to leave a few kind suggestions about Zimitzelov and uh, try to make it. Because he loves it. When I make it, it, it is a love thing. And it is a love thing because I put love in the food. So he's like, how do you put love in the food? It's like, he's asking me, like, how do you have a soul? Have you seen your soul? What part? Do you, like, you can't see it on an x-ray? I was like, no, but I don't need to see it to know I have one. <laughs> and he's like that. He's like, well, how do you know you're cooking with love? <clears throat> Believe me, I know, okay? I know. Right now I'm cooking with aggravation because someone is questioning the love ingredient. Love is not an ingredient, though. He's like, you're a baker, you're a scientist, you know chemical, you know, combinations and everything. I, I don't get this. And he's just, oh, God. And then we have to have that conversation. It always turns into something funny, you know. It really is. But um, so tonight I gotta, I gotta put the love into the food, and help him think and believe that he made the meatloaf. <laughs> because I would love a really good meatloaf. <clears throat> And egg noodles and gravy and all that. Just hearty, good, cold weather. Yummy, nummy. 
poor white girl food, you know, because it's just that day, and um, I thought it would be fun because he's kind of sick of chicken. <laughs> chicken, chicken was all I could afford at the grocery. I mean, my God, have you guys seen what it costs for a steak? <clears throat> I'm not kidding. If I want to do prime rib, boy, I better be ready to drop a C note. And I mean, a C note for a prime rib, I'm like, God, that's like two diamond paintings. <laughs> or one really, really big one. And uh, it's another thing. He's getting a little annoyed that I'm so enthralled with my diamond painting situation that I refer to expenses as, hold on a minute, I gotta take this off, this hurts. Expenses as, um, I pinched my fingers somehow. You know, but that's a diamond painting. <laughs> like, I know that's a diamond painting. <laughs> but I have been really good. I said I was gonna take October off and not get too crazy on it, you know, and, um, you know, start putting a little away for the holidays because the holidays are coming early this year. And if you want to go shopping, you got to go now because, you know, they're already marking things down. Thank God. Thank God. I cannot wait. Macy's is coming to me. So, uh, that gets to happen. And in that very same breath, I did order two diamond paintings. <laughs> but one was a back order that I should have gotten, but it sold out so quickly. I had to wait till they restocked it. And the other one I'm freaking out is... Um, you'll probably see them this week. It's a Chuck Pinson. I don't do Chuck Pinson's people. I am not a Chucky girl. Um, I sound like the Chucky doll. The Chucky girl. I'm a Chucky girl in a Chucky world. No, I, I am not crazy about... I love the work and I love the finished product. But truthfully speaking... I'm not really a landscaper, and every time I see those cabins in the woods, I think about Dexter. Oh my God, have you seen the new Dexter? He's out, he's back, and uh, living in a cabin in the woods, just like everybody you see when you're like, uh-uh, nope, nope, not going to that house, serial killer right there, right there, you know, anyway. A lot of his, <clears throat> pardon me, my throat, it's autumn, Ugh. I got the yucks. Everybody say good morning to Harry. Harry from Harrods, he came all the way from Harrods just, just to, just to make me happy. Kitty, kitty patitty. Oh, and by the way, I have to, I don't have them where I can reach them because I already put them on my tree. Um, damn it. If I go out there, I'm going to wake up the dogs. I have to say a huge thank you. I have received two Christmas ornaments for my tree. You guys, you are so sweet. Um, everybody is sending me, like, uh, we made, well, I, this is nothing official or anything, okay? I mean, first of all, nobody has to send me anything. Um, your company is more valuable than anything that anyone could send me. Um, but, uh, I was wallowing about a month ago on one of my uploads. Um, I'm one of my little rants here about, um, 
a ornament, uh, a little white dog ornament. And I can't find my dog ornaments anywhere. I'm finding brown dogs and, you know, I'm I just to find little white dog ornaments that look like great Pyrenees is almost impossible. And I'm not a clay sculptor girl. And so I can't just whip out a pop of clay and, you know, go all ghost about it and make it. I, I, I just, you know, so I was kind of feeling it. And two people have sent me beautiful little ornaments. One is all the way from Norway. Thank you a million times. And um, the other one is uh, from my girl in New Jersey. Um, who said, you want a white dog? I got a white dog right here, right here. Here you go. You wanted a white dog. So I got you a white dog. She's so sweet. Anyway, so I have them on my tree. And I'm thinking, you know, this is probably a shot in the dark. But if I ever got enough of them, I would do a YouTube tree. And we could sit around on a live stream and talk about all the different ornaments and where they came from. And if you have an ornament, even if it's of your dog, you know, I would love to do an all dog dog tree. That is kind of where it's at. But dog ornaments are not easy to find. So, there's that. I am going to get so emotional and cry like an idiot if I go on about it because I love it. I love that somebody would send you something and take the time even if they're drop shipping it or just ordering it just to just to say that you know you're loved and and it really did make me feel so loved and the thank you cards are on the way so uh thank you a million times and i will like i said i'll i'll either i'll either bring the camera out later and show you guys because they're already on the tree. They're perfectly placed. I don't want to move them. <laughs> Once I finish a tree, if I take something off of it, there's every opportunity that I will go uh, ADD and move it around and never know where I put it. So I have to be methodical about where I'm putting my things. You know? <laughs> Anyway, oh my God, I just looked up at the time. I am in big trouble here. Um, let me let you guys know. I will uh, let you know how the brake pads go. Hopefully they won't be. I think it'll be a good night. You know, because I'll teach them how to get the onions and the mushrooms and everything together. I think I want to do it with kind of like a... More like a stroganoffy sauce and then, you know, three bottles of ketchup. <laughs> I know. I don't know. How do you like your meatloaf? You know? Everybody likes it a certain way. How do you like yours? Leave a comment for me. Anyway, I will talk to you guys soon. Um, thank you again for the beautiful ornament uh, situation and... And for listening and hanging out. And uh, I'll catch you in my next video, which I will hopefully, hopefully, prayerfully have better hands by then. Because uh, they're all like, ah, more floral wire, help me. Anyway, I'll talk to you guys later. Have a great, great, great day. Remember, you're very important and shine on. Okay? Shine big. Bye-bye. Thank you.